Hello, welcome to the first sequence in our series. My name is Sharon. So for today's practice, I'd like you to have one blanket and two blocks if they're available. So let's start in a comfortable cross-legged position, bringing the right shin in front of the left. So for some of you, there may be more restrictions through the groin and the hips, and the knees may be a little bit higher. If that's the case, you can bring one blanket or two, or even a yoga block, to sit up on so that those knees can drop down. Once you're there, let's draw the palms to the thighs, drawing the elbows back so that they're under the shoulders. Sitting with a tall spine, soften the shoulder blades down the back. And then just allow the eyes to close for a breath or two. We won't stay here very long. We just want to start our practice by settling the breath. This allows us to settle the mind. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Two more in through the nose. Exhale. One more in through the nose. Exhale, release. Allow those eyes to flutter open, but try and maintain the steady, smooth breathing. So if you're seated on a blanket, you can maintain um, that position, or if you'd prefer, you can pull the blanket out from underneath. So for our first couple of postures, we're going to be on the ground. So the first pose we're going to start with is fire log pose. So what we're going to do is bring the right ankle to stack on the left knee and the right knee to stack on the left ankle. Once we're there, we want to sit with the tall spine flexing through both feet. If it's difficult for you to maintain that right hip bone on the mat or there's a lot of space between the knees, just come back to that cross-legged position, right shin in front. So once you find the pose that will work for you, bring the fingertips alongside the hips. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, beginning to walk the hands forward, but maintain the tall spine. So everybody's going to fold to a different degree. Just find the spot that allows you to begin feeling sensation through the hips. Maybe swaying a little bit from side to side, coaxing the hips open. And then inhale, coming up. We're going to turn and angle our torso towards the right foot, regardless of which position you're in. If you're in a, a cross-legged position, then you're going to walk the hands forward like we just did. If you're in fire log, we're going to take the, the top of the right hand, bring it to the sole of the right foot. We're going to have the left fingertips on the mat next to us, slowly starting to slide the arm down. Again, only moving as far as feels comfortable for you. So you want to be able to maintain your steady breath. We'll stay here for three breaths. Two. One more breath. Inhale, coming up wherever you are. Bringing the right hands down. We'll switch sides. So if you're in fire log, stacking left ankle over the right knee, left knee over the right ankle. If you're in a cross-legged position, bring the left shin in front. If you're in fire log, flex through the feet, sitting with the tall spine. Inhale here, exhale, walking the hands forward. Again, it's our first pose, so just be gentle, maybe rocking a little bit from side to side. It's beginning to open the hips. Noticing where you feel the pose. And then walking those hands up, we're going to turn an all angle towards the left foot. If you're in cross-legged, just walk the hands forward. In fire log, we'll take the front of the left hand, bring it to the sole of the left foot. Right fingertips rooted on the mat. Inhale here. Exhale, slowly starting to slide the arm down. Settle the breath. Three breaths here. One more breath, and then inhale, coming up, release. So from here, we're going to extend both legs forward. So if there's more restriction through the hamstrings, you may want to keep a slight bend in the knee. It's better to have a bend in the knee and a tall spine versus slouching. So inhale, bringing the fingers alongside the hips. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, round. And then inhale, coming up. We're going to come on into another C 
seated hip opener. So we're gonna come into Gomukhasana. So for Gomukhasana, we stack the right knee over the left. If you have more restriction through the hips, you're gonna to wanna to draw those heels closer towards the hips. If there's more room there, then you can bring the shins so that they're more parallel. If you're laughing at home and it does not seem like you're able to root that right hip on the ground, then just extend the left leg straight, flex through the left foot. So find your pose, one that you can maintain the breath in. Fingers alongside the hips, inhale here, Exhale, keeping the spine tall, we'll walk the fingers forward. Three breaths here. One more breath. And then inhale, walking the hands back up. We'll change sides. So bringing the left knee to stack on the right knee. Making sure both sit bones are rooted, flexing through the feet fingers alongside the body. Inhale for a tall spine. Exhale, walking the hands forward. Chest forward, gaze forward and slightly down. Taking three breaths. One more breath here. And then walking the fingers up. We'll do the same thing with our legs. So we'll extend both legs forward, flexing through the feet, pushing the big toes away as we wrap the pinky toes in. Fingers alongside the hips. Inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the chest, lift the gaze. And then exhale, round, gazing down towards the thighs. Inhale, lift. And from here, we'll make our way into downward facing dog. So removing any props that you have, blankets, if you are using blocks or if you have blocks available, bring them towards the front of your mat as we might uh, need them later in class. So from table, we'll walk the hands forward, curl the toes under, lift the knees up, moving into downward facing dog. So we're not gonna hold our downward facing dog too long, but we are just gonna bring our awareness to the back of the legs, those hamstrings. Just begin to bend one knee Bending the right knee, straightening the left. Trying to see if we can get the left heel moving towards the floor. And then we'll bend the left knee, drop the right. One more time, each side. Bend right knee, left leg straightens. And then we'll change sides. And then coming back to down dog, taking three breaths here. Settling the breath. One more breath. And then from here, we're gonna move into our lizard pose. So we'll lift the right leg up behind us and step the right foot between the hands. If that's difficult to get the right leg forward, then from down dog, we'll bring the left knee down and step the right foot forward. So once you have the left knee planted, we're gonna bring both hands to the inside of the right foot. We're gonna move the foot off to the side and angle that right foot so that it's pointing towards the front right corner of the mat. So for this version, we wanna keep the sole of the foot planted and the right knee hugging in towards the right shoulder. So if the floor feels really far away here, you can bring a block underneath the hands. So inhale, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Holding here for a breath or two. And then from here, we're gonna to work to find our edge. So that may be different for everybody. Some of us may be able to bring those forearms down to a block. Some of us may be able to bring the forearms down to the floor. So finding our edge means finding your version of the pose that will allow you to feel sensation through the right hip, but maintain the breath. So we wanna keep that chest moving forward, the gaze moving forward. We'll hold here for three breaths. One more breath. And then inhale, coming up if you folded. We're gonna keep the legs as they are, and we're gonna walk the hands over towards the front left corner of the mat. So from here, we're gonna walk those left fingers as far forward as they'll go. 
So we can plant the palm or stay on the fingertips. Then we'll bring the forearm either down onto a block or onto the mat. If this is not accessible, then just stay up on the palms. What we want to try to avoid is drawing the hips with us. Keep the right hip drawing back. And breathe. Three breaths. One more breath. And then walking the hands up, we'll come back to center. We'll wiggle that right foot back so it's more towards the center of the mat, bringing the right hand alongside the right foot. From here, we're going to move into a half splits pose. So we'll walk the hands back, flexing through the right foot. So this is a great place for blocks if your hands are having a hard time reaching the floor. Inhale, tall spine, flex the foot. Lift the chest, lift the gaze. Inhale here. Exhale, round, dropping the neck, the gaze towards that right leg. Inhale, coming up. We'll start to walk those hands forward, rebending the, the right knee. We're going to plant the left hand again if the floor is far away. Great place for a block. Bring the right hand to the right hip. Turn the chest to the right. Staying here if this feels like enough or reaching the right arm to the sky. One more inhale. Exhale, right hand comes down. We're going to walk those right hands up to the right thigh. So for this pose, Anjane Asana, we're going to focus more on the hips and the hip flexor. So push your right heel into the mat and push your left knee into the mat. And then imagine that you're going to drag them towards midline without actually moving them. So push them into the floor. Notice how the muscles through both legs begin to engage. Bringing the hands to the right thigh, soften the shoulders, lift the chest, lift the chin. Staying here or maybe keeping the work in the legs but shifting the hips forward a little bit. Inhale here. Exhale. Release the hands down. We'll move back to down dog. Curling the toes under, lifting the back knee, stepping right foot back to meet the left. Taking three breaths here. And then we'll do the same series on the left side. So we'll lift that left leg up, step the left foot between the hands, release the back knee, coming into lizard pose. So we'll bring both hands to the inside of the left foot and wiggle the foot out to the side so that it's angled towards the front left corner. So inhale, finding a spot for the hands, block or mat, lift the chest, lift the chin. And then from here, we'll take the pose further. So maybe coming down forearms to blocks or forearms to the mat. Think about the chest moving forward. So sometimes we round the back and as we do that, we lift the hips. So we want to keep the chest and the chin moving forward. Keep the left knee hugging in towards the left shoulder. Inhale, coming up. Keeping the legs as they are, we'll walk those hands over towards the right. From here, we'll walk the fingers on the right hand as far forward as they'll go. Once there, we can bring the left forearm to our blocks or the mat. Again, making sure that left hip is drawing back and not moving towards the hands. Holding here. Two more breaths. One more breath. Inhale, walking the hands back in. We'll bring that left foot back to the center of the mat, bringing the left hand on the other side of the left foot. From here, we'll move into our half splits. So we'll walk the hands back, flexing through the left leg, flexing through the left foot, drawing the left hip crease back. 
So sometimes if there's a lot of constriction through the left hamstring, that left hip shifts forward. See if you can keep hips squared forward, fingertips, lifted chest, lifted chin. Inhale here, exhale round. Inhale, lift. And on our exhale, we'll begin to rebend the front knee, walking the hands forward. We're going to plant the right hand on the block or the mat, bring the left hand to the left hip. We're going to rotate the chest open, keeping the gaze here or turning the gaze up towards the ceiling, maybe lifting the left arm. Inhale here. Exhale, release. From here, we'll walk those hands up to the left thigh, coming into our Anjane Asana pose. So beginning to get the leg engagement, imagine you're gonna drag the foot and the knee in towards center without actually moving them. Soften the shoulders, lift the chest, lift the chin. Then keeping the work in the legs, shifting the hips forward. Getting a nice stretch through the right hip flexor. And then releasing the hands down, we'll make our way back to down dog. Curling the back toes under, lifting the back knee, stepping left foot back to meet the right. So taking a few breaths here, and then we'll make our way forward. So coming up onto the tiptoes, bending the knees, tiptoeing towards the front of our mat. Coming into a forward fold here. So the feet can be hips distance. If the hands connect with the floor, you can allow them to touch there. If they aren't reaching the floor, grab onto the opposite bicep. Just allow the weight of the arms to draw the crown of the head towards the floor. So if the hamstrings are still feeling tight, keep a bend in the knees, or you can move the, ham the legs more towards straight. Shaking the torso, swaying from side to side. And then we'll release those hands down. Inhale, lift halfway and fold. Inhale, we'll all reach our arms up. Bring the hands to heart center. So from here, we're going to come into uh, a goddess squat. So I'll turn this way so you can see me at home. We're going to come to stand on our mat, bringing your feet hips a little bit wider than hips distance. You want the feet angled out. We're going to bring the hands to heart center, and we're going to slowly sink the hips towards the floor. So I need to bring my feet in a little bit. If you can make it all the way down, push the elbows into the knees. If the heels have begun to lift off the floor, then grab your blanket and bring it underneath the heels so the heels have something to rest on. Another nice option here is to bring your block underneath your sit bones and rest there. Some of you may be up a little bit higher. So find the pose that you can hold for a few breaths. So you don't want to be struggling. You want to be able to maintain your breath. Inhale here and exhale. If you're in the full goddess squat, maybe even swaying a little bit from side to side. Two more breaths. One more breath. We'll bring the hands down wherever we are and straighten the legs, turning the feet more towards parallel. Shake out the head, yes and no. And then we'll lower the sit bones to the ground and we'll come to sit on our mat once again. So we're gonna come into Baddha Konasana pose, cobbler's pose. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide. So for some of us, we may be able to scoot the heels a little bit closer to the groin and if you have more restriction you may want to create more of a diamond shape with the heels to the groin bringing the hands to the shins or the feet inhale tall spine exhale shifting forward so some of us might not have to move very far forward to get a nice stretch through the groin so moving slowly as you fold so that you can be aware of where your edge is. 
where your stopping point may be. And then once you get there, take three breaths. One more breath. And then inhale, coming up. Let's flap the knees a little bit, release some tension. And then we'll extend those legs forward again. Pull the flesh out from underneath the sit bones. So working to get the legs straight, flexing through the feet. If there's a lot of restriction through the hamstrings, keep a slight bend in the knees. We're gonna reach the arms up, lift the chest, lift the gaze, and then reach the hands towards the feet. If they reach, they can grab on there. If they reach the ankles or the shins, just grab on there. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the chin, gazing forward. And then exhale, allowing the spine to round, gazing towards the knees. And then we'll walk those hands back up. And we'll come into our cross-legged position, which we began with. So this time, let's bring the left shin in front of the right. Bring the palms to the thighs. Draw the palms back so that the elbows are underneath the shoulders. Allow the eyes to close. We'll take a few breaths here. Settling the breath. Settling the mind. So if you have more time to stay at home, feel free to stay here. Otherwise, we'll flutter the eyes open, bringing the hands to heart center. Namaste.